Welcome to the Capital Discussions Market Analysis. I'm Tom Nonamaker with Jim Riggio and Jerry First. Before we get started, quick disclaimer, Capital Discussions is not a broker-dealer or an investment advisor. This presentation is for educational purposes only. We don't know your situation and have no way of knowing what level of risk is appropriate for you. We're not making any specific trade recommendations. The risk of loss in trading options can be substantial, so please be aware of all your risks prior to placing any trades. Hypothetical computer simulated trades are believed to be accurately represented, however, actual profit or loss may vary due to market factors such as liquidity, slippage, and commissions. So with that out of the way, welcome back everyone. Interesting couple of days in the market, bouncing down and bouncing up just as hard today. And Jerry, you've got the ball if you want to share your screen. Okay, very good, sound check. Yep, loud and clear. Okay, very good. So, yeah, uh, very interesting as far as, uh, I think it was last Monday, we had a complete reversal from the previous week. We looked at a one-minute chart. Uh, you know, let's go ahead and here, I'll just I'll pull, up, uh, pull up the NASDAQ. And let's go down to a one-minute chart and bring in all this data. All right, let's go to a five-minute chart. And so here, this is the five-minute chart going back to, let's say, Friday's uh, plunge down. And then today, we just ramped right back up, uh, filled the hole. Some people say that's, uh, who's that economist that says uh, dig a hole and then, and then fill it up and it creates uh, economic activity? And it looks like that's what we're doing here. No, it was John Maynard Keynes who said that, that it would be uh, okay to bury money and then give people jobs to dig it up. <laughs> I didn't hear the part about that, that. That was how they did the gold rush and how they got people to run out to California. There's gold out in, in them their hills and buy some picks and shovels and pans and we even got you some hookahs. I mean, no offense, sir. But... Uh, not that hook is a bad thing. I hear the hookers are uh, hookers for Hillary. Have you seen that one, Jim? Oh, wait a second. I said this last week. I don't want to have to cut you off. I'm getting ready to hit the mute button. Okay, on you. Okay. All right. All right. Just remember, it's like uh, talk about economic activities. Over $2 billion just from one campaign alone. John Corzine's looking to start a new hedge fund. And uh, it's all connected. So you got to have a little uh, clarity uh, in the conversation. Now, on this chart, do you end up having, is this just um, during the day? It's no after hours um, um, trading, is it? This, no, this is futures. This is this is 24 hour, uh, this is 24 hour clock. Oh, it is 24 hour clock. So, yeah. so that big drop was on... Um, this one, I believe, back from March 25th, I believe that was a Fed, a Fed announcement. Uh, I'd have to go back into the calendar. But uh, you just, in the grand scheme of things, you can see the, the pattern as far as uh, we go ahead, we close out here at uh, around 11.30, just before 10.30, just around the uh, European close, huge plunge down. This one here on March 31st, this is at 1.30 Eastern time, huge plunge down. Look at the triangle pattern right here. Remember, these patterns, even though this is, this is a 30-minute chart, these patterns and trend channels, it doesn't matter what time frame it is, uh, they just they work extremely powerfully. This is a beautiful example of a triangle pattern where it just hit the apex and then, bam, slammed down, made a double bottom and then immediately went right back up to where it started from. So, uh, so we've got the, uh, the dips that keep getting bought. Uh, on the S&P 500, one of the things to draw your attention to, you know, looking at the time frames, the weekly charts, uh, these lines right here, moving averages, this is the 50, this is the 100, and this is the 200 period moving average. And notice how that 50 period moving average has just been almost drawing this trend, supporting trend channel. Uh, prices, it looks like distribution. 
you know, uh, these up and down days on the Dow of 300 points up, 300 points down. For people who aren't really paying attention to the market, they think that's a big, big swing, but we're at 18,000. So uh, the days that I'm expecting are going to be six, seven, eight hundred points up and down. Uh, we haven't got there yet. So, uh, so that's the telltale signs that I'm looking for uh, as far as a real shakeout in the market. Uh, have we put in a double bottom on oil? Uh, we've got uh, what I consider to be a pretty strong pattern is a W pattern uh, that I pointed out last week. And sure enough, once we broke the midpoint of that W pattern, we're now moving back up higher. So we were at a decision point last week, and so far it looks like uh, oil wants to move higher. Uh, to me, oil is the main driver currently from a technical uh, economic perspective. Of course, that's always up for debate. And then gold just uh, grinding its way sideways. Uh, for those people who stack physical, you want to just make sure you got a spectrometer and make sure it's the real thing. Uh, on the euro, on a weekly chart, we've kind of come down. We've put on a bottom over here at about uh, 105, and we're just grinding out a bottom here. Some people say we're still looking for parity. The fundamental side of the story, once again, I'm going to have to go ahead and bring up bring up the fact that we have uh, Greece. Uh, and the, the general Greek public is uh, shocked. This uh, came out, was published uh, 10 to 4, 5 to 4 Eastern time. And the capital controls are now being put into place. For those of you who aren't following too closely, uh, Greece has now asked for all of the regional banks, to kind of put it in a U.S. perspective, all of the regional banks have been told to take any cash they have on hand, any euros or any type of liquidity they have on hand, they need to send it to the central bank. And so technically the average uh, Greek who didn't want to go ahead and take their money out of the bank, uh, they're saying that uh, basically uh, they're going to find out that tomorrow there's basically no euros in their public bank accounts over there in Greece. And uh, could that happen here someday? Hopefully never. Hopefully not. Uh, but Greece could be a big experiment. So, uh, so it, it, some people have said that this is like a very, very slow train wreck train wreck in slow motion. And so we're going to see. Uh, Jerry, the entire euro is a big experiment. So is quantitative easing for that matter. That's true. That's true. And it draws all these squiggly lines on these charts. So that's the whole idea. Uh, so what are we going to do? How do we trade it, right? Uh, you know, a, a, couple of, a couple of comments about, um, about the charts that you've shown so far. Um, there have been a lot of um, cup and handle or um, W patterns and different things. Some of them have had breakouts. Some of them look like they're trying to. Um, uh, the, the news of something like Greece, uh, there, there needs to end up being Greece by itself, and I think that we've seen that with today. Right? right? There was a sell-off on Friday, but, but Greece by itself and a Grexit or a Greek exit, um, while potentially painful, um, if it, if there is no contagion, okay, uh, if if um, if it doesn't spread to other areas, uh, it by itself, uh, you know, I think the market is reasonably well braced for it. Uh, what they're not braced for uh, is for it to be the first of many dominoes. Exactly, okay. Italy, Spain, Portugal, In even Ireland, Ireland yeah. Uh, it'll be it'll be smaller dominoes in the beginning, you know. And the last time this happened, you remember things. What happened with Cyprus? Uh, you know, Cy Cyprus is small enough that like no, you no, know, it doesn't hit anybody's radar. But but th th that's the big issue. Now, when I end up taking a look at, at things like a, you know oil, because don't forget, to me, oil is um, a great barometer of of um, 
economic, okay, growth. Now, yes, there's a lot of factors going into it. There's geopolitical. There's the fact that, you know, fracking has changed the dynamics of a lot of things. I, I, I get all of that. But you have a, a, a perfect W where we've had a breakout. Um, and you, you, you look at that, and it, it kind of ends up telling me that, that perhaps, you know, we've, we've gone a bit too far. And don't forget, there's also, uh, you know, either premiums that are either added into or taken away from oil because of a, a geopolitical risks and, and things. But it does seem that we, we've uh, stabilized uh, some more. Uh, you know, Tyler, okay, your, your buddy at Zero Hedge, does take some extreme points, okay, in, in different areas. Um, so I think it's, it's um, you know, it's kind of like if you want to end up finding out what really happened, uh, you know, you watch Fox News and MSNBC and the truth is somewhere in between. Um, <laughs> I don't know about that. I, I, yeah, we'll, st we'll stick with the hilarity of the situation, but go ahead. I'm not, I'm not political, so all you guys on the left, okay, are going to tell me that no, MSNBC is the Bible, and it's it's the one. And the guys on the right are going to tell me the same thing. I'm going to pull. I'm going to pull up a chart of viewership, and then and then you know let let that fact speak for themselves. But go ahead. It's a, but but with, with Tyler's stuff, it's pretty much um, it it sometimes going to be a bit um ex, uh, you know extreme. Some of the things that we've see, seen here, though, is, is that let's take a look at the market and what's actually tradable on this mm -hmm. stuff. Oh, absolutely. Well, here's the big thing. I mean, you know, I, I really do believe that Tyler and Zero Hedge is worthy of mention because even though some people actually call it doom porn, in other words, it's like it's it's like you got to keep tuning in because it's just it's so intriguing. So, and it's all about, you know, the world's going to end any day now. And, uh, and so that's pretty much uh, part of what they do. But the fact of the matter is, be, uh, whether you go for the 30-minute uh, news report, uh, you know, without the Internet, our news really is extremely limited. Can you imagine a world without the Internet? We'd be locked into CNN, MSNBC, and Fox only. What what Tyler does do is you you do have to read through the lines, and if you dare to go and look at the comments on this website, you know you got to be a little careful and thick-skinned, or and try not to get sucked into it. But the fact of the matter is, when there's breaking news, you're probably going to see it on Zero Hedge first, and I'm starting to see even CNBC pulling their headlines off of Zero Hedge. Uh, I mean, I loved, let's talk about uh, Mario Draghi last week. I mean, that was classic. Um, uh, when you talk about uh, ECB protest, right? Let's see if it comes up. Uh, anybody who hasn't, uh, oh, it was just there a second ago. What happened? The search seemed to go away. Yeah, it, was, it showed up and then it, and then it disappeared. I mean, this is scary in a way when you take a look and think that uh, how vulnerable uh, some of some of you know society and civilization is extremely fragile. It's very easy to go ahead and pick something up and break it. And this lady, or whatever you want to call her, all she had was a bag of confetti. Uh, but imagine if she had you know something a little bit more violent in mind. So uh, and, and those are the undercurrent geopolitical. This is such a classic. Look at this. It's like, it looks like a Monty Python. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't mean to laugh. It looks like a Monty Python skit. Um, but uh, uh, it's just, uh, is this is this what, what, you know, is holding, you know, civilization together here? So, uh, where else are you going to find, you know, the actual news? Okay, I mean, uh, and and Tyler does such a job uh, keeping this thing going. Of course, he's a pseudonym for I don't know how many uh, people he has on staff, but uh, you know, where else are you going to go? I mean, here, here's IBM. Uh, worst sales since 2002. Earnings per share beats on aggressive buybacks. I mean, you know. Uh, here's here's a chart of IBM after they just reported earnings. Uh, 
the market maker move out of Thinkorswim was five points. So let's take a look at this. Uh, they closed at 4 o'clock at 166.50, and it went up to 171.25. Close enough for government work, okay? Uh, and then it came right back down, filled the gap. So uh, who knows what kind of momentum we'll have tomorrow, but... Uh, for the market maker moves on think or swim you know it's interesting um for the advanced option traders who love to play earnings uh you know you've got to go ahead and potentially be defensive if, in case things go in the wrong direction and one strategy i should say is that uh, you have enough cash to buy the shares uh while the while the option markets are closed uh because you may, this may only be a fleeting glimpse. Uh, you never know where the market itself, for whatever reason, where it might open tomorrow. So, uh, so you know, I'm diverging from uh, from zero hedge back to, you know, where do you get your your real fundamental news? Do you really want to go to the Bureau of Lies and Statistics, or you know, uh, do you want to go ahead and go to Shadow? Uh, sh was it Shadow 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 Statistics? Uh, I think it is. Which one? Isn't it Shadow Stats? Shadow Stats, I believe, is is what it is. And if it wasn't for Tyler, I mean, I, I'm sure that I, I would have found it, found it elsewhere. But yeah, you know, what the real numbers are, uh, or what they would have been if they hadn't changed the formula for uh, calculating inflation and GDP and so forth. So, uh, you know, as traders or swing investors, however you want to describe yourself, you know, it's all about pulling in information and making your your own mind up, unless if you're going to just plug things into an algorithm and let a computer make, make decisions for you. And, uh, and then it comes down to your decision support software, such as whether it's uh, iVol for, for looking at vol skews or if you're going to look at option view or whatever it might be and and uh, the subjectivity of coming up with support and resistance levels. Now here's uh, charts of IBM uh, and you can take a look and see that on a daily chart, let me go back to to one of my other other charts go out to a Let's go out to it daily. It's a little bit cleaner. And so here, I mean, look at how many times price has tried to get above this resistance level of 165. Hit it once, twice, three, four times here, five. Pierced it today. And we've got the 200 period moving average of 171. And so 166 and five, which is the market maker move that was expected out of, uh, let's go over here. Trade IBM, I don't know if you can read that, 5.6 was the plus or minus market maker move out of think or swim. And uh, so there it is. Tomorrow you'll see, well, actually, I mean, if I went to the other chart, you know, on daily, uh, it's gone ahead and it's tapped the 200 period moving average. Is that going to be resistance? Are you going to work, uh, you know, IBM alone is, is, you know, a prime major component uh, that'll move, move the Dow index. And uh, everything, uh, when it comes to the ETFs, it's just so critical to understand these individual components and how one, just one stock like IBM can completely move things and push things around. Shadow stats, Tom's typed in. Okay, 
I've, I've talked about quite a few different things. I've talked about uh, support and resistance, whether it's a solid so horizontal line or a moving average. I've talked about zero hedge, uh, grease, shadow stats, um, some of the things that are coming up. Uh, let's go ahead usually every week here for market discussion. I like to always go ahead and take a look at the economic calendars. And so, okay, this is, I already, let's go and click on that again. And so the news this week is actually sparse. Uh, we've got uh, Red Book, Treasuries, nothing really, price indexes, home sales, nothing, jobless claims, New home sales on Thursday, and the big no, the big talk is it's all about apartment and uh, condo rentals versus single family homes these days. Durable goods at the end of the week, so it's really all about earnings as far as the U.S. Uh, markets and indexes go. Uh, as far as what they want to blame the rally or the crush on. So with that, I mean, I've kind of, you know, covered a lot of a lot of ground in a in a in a short yeah. amount of time. What's on your mind, or or what? Uh... Oh, I promoted Hamanchu. He's here, so it's always interesting to have uh, your take on your what do CCI or other technical analysis of what you're seeing in the market too. Hamanchu, do you want to uh, share your screen and uh, show what you're, you're thinking? Sure, no problem. Okay, let's go ahead and you want to go ahead and let me go ahead and let's see, can I go ahead and promote? Oh, I already did or, it. You already, I already got it? Did, yes. Okay. Let me share my screen. Come. See, it's working. Tally ho. Tally ho. I always love it when people talk about IBM because it's the one thing that I've traded more than anything else on the planet. <laughs> and yes, I was hoping also that uh, it will come close to the 200, maybe touch the 200 and then come back down because I actually also like it when IBM falls and drops like a rock. <clears throat> But as uh, Jerry was saying, yeah, there's not much news, uh, not much is happening except, uh, you know, boats capsizing in the Mediterranean, uh, unpleasant things to hear about, but that is the story of life. But all in all, it was a rather uh, surprising move today. I was hoping that after a big down move on Friday, the markets will continue down. However, as you can see, the CCR is showing us a zero line reject. And while this is still a zero line reject, CCI has not cleared the previous high. So this could stall and sort of just, this is the spiders, by the way, not IBM now. But all in all, we have our 200 period moving average sloping up. So essentially, uh, by default, that makes me bullish. On the other hand, uh, we have certain triangles developing, and obviously anything can happen if it breaks out of the triangle one way or the other. The, the worst thing is that every time we think it's going to break down, but instead it breaks up. So this time I am going to put on a damn strangle as it comes close to the edge of this, this triangle. But other than that, from a uh, technical perspective, uh, it looks like the market may continue to move slightly up or stall. We do not know whether it's going to move down or not. As you can see, the, uh, the ADX is telling us that the trend, whatever slight trend that was up, has now dissipated. So once again, uh, this leaves us with a scenario where anything can happen. We still have some earnings left over the next 10 days. I don't know whether any uh, big companies are coming out with earnings like Intel or Cisco, 
or not. But usually when Intel comes out and says good things, the market really goes up. Uh, or if they say that uh, sales are not going to be so good, then the markets usually tank. But this is where we stand right now. All in all, I don't see much happening right this particular week so far. Uh, hopefully something will happen and we will get a move one way or the other. But if it stays where it is, I'm still okay. Because as, as far as we income traders are concerned, we actually prefer things like this, where the market doesn't move much or it moves only slightly. It's this sort of things that actually kill us. So I'm hoping that this will continue. That's my take on the market as a whole right now. What do you think, Tom? Well, I, uh, I tend to agree with you. I mean, I, I hear people predicting a big sell-off, but you know, every time it tries to move down, it just comes right back. So to me, it looks like it's just congestion bouncing around in that range, say, on your chart, maybe 205 to 211, something like that. Until it really goes past one of those, uh, to me, it's just going sideways. Okay, good. Time to put on some income trades. <laughs> yep, or your strangle. <laughs> well, 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 down the strangle, and... yeah. The strangle would have to be long term because we don't know how long this is going to chop around. It'd That's right. Great it could... If it chops around for like, a, you know, four, five, six months, that would be great. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, questions, comments uh, from from Jerry Himanshu. Anybody else watching? Jim uh, had the... I don't see any comments. Do you? Uh, I don't. It's not in the chat. Nope. And uh, Jim had to leave, so he's actually gone. Oh. Okay. Uh, so I guess uh, if nobody else has anything, we've gone through our comments and the economic review. Uh, no sense in keeping everybody here. Let's uh, keep the meeting short and uh, not waste anybody's time. What do you think? That's fine, but uh, just ask the folks whether they have any questions. Somebody might, for all we know. Yeah, nobody seems to be typing anything in. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Last and uh, please for help. Right. Okay, Welcome. so thanks, covered it. Well, I guess that's a wrap, gents. Thanks, uh, Jerry and Hamanchu, for uh, sharing your desktops and going over your analysis. Really appreciate it. No All right, problem. very it good. Fun. See you again next week. Have a good one in between, and uh, good trading. All right, thanks, Thank everyone. You, you too. Okay, right. bye. Bye. Bye.